Well, hello and good morning, everyone. It is great to be back in sunny California, not a cloud in the sky. And um, I, uh, I'm here joined with over 100 members of our research and innovation uh, team members here in our uh, research center. And at the same time, joined by several uh, Silicon Valley partners. In addition, we have over 200,000 men and women around the world from Ford uh, beaming in to be with us today. So I want to give a big welcome to all of you here this morning. And we wanted you to be first to hear about a significant development regarding the future of transportation. You know, it's now clear that the next decade is going to be defined by the automation of the automobile. And in fact, we see autonomous vehicles as having as significant an impact on society as Ford's moving assembly line did over 100 years ago. And that's why today we're announcing Ford's intent to have a high volume SAE level four fully autonomous vehicle in commercial operation in 2021 in a ride hailing or ride sharing service. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> so that's right. Ford is going to be mass producing vehicles with full autonomy in five years. That means there's going to be no steering wheel. There's not going to be a gas pedal. There's not going to be a brake pedal. And of course, a driver is not going to be required. Now, if somebody would have told you 10 years ago, or even five years ago, that the CEO of a major American car company is going to be up here announcing the mass production of a vehicle without a steering wheel, uh, they would have told you you were pretty crazy or nuts or both. But the world is changing, and it's changing very quickly. And some of that change, and some of the best parts, are going to be driven by Ford. Now, you'll likely notice that, you know, we've, we've taken our time to discuss our autonomous vehicle plans. And that's very simply because we are not in a race to make announcements. We're in a race to do what's right for our customers, and we're in a race to do what's right for our business. But what's important to understand is this is not just about building an autonomous vehicle. There's something much deeper going on here. Uh, something that motivates us every single day. And something that, to be quite honest, is part of our DNA as a company. More than 100 years ago, we were founded with a very clear mission to make people's lives better by making transportation accessible and using ingenuity and advancing human progress. You know, in those days, when the auto industry just started out, cars just, you know, they used to be for rich people. But the innovations at Ford brought the automobile to millions of vehicles, uh, millions of people around the world. And at that time, you know, it was a very radical idea. It was a very disruptive idea in its day. Because most people in the U.S. at that time didn't travel more than five miles away from their home. So when car ownership became a reality for millions of people, they became more connected, they explored more, and they found greater opportunities to live, to play, and to work where they wanted. In a way, it really was like a revolution in the connectivity of average folks, the likes of which we've never seen again until recently. Now, this principle of bringing life-changing technologies to millions of people around the world is at the core of what we do as a company. So when we step back and we look at, you know, how can we make the most difference in people's lives during the next hundred years, we see the autonomous car changing the way the world moves once again. And that's because autonomous cars address a host of safety, social, and environmental issues that are important in the day. So let's start with safety. Right now, there are more than 30,000 motor vehicle deaths per year here in the United States. 
and about 90% of those deaths are attributable to human error. Now, autonomous vehicles could drastically reduce those number of fatalities. That is immense. And that alone is a very powerful motivator for all of us. But there's also much more to it. Autonomous vehicles, it is going to open up opportunities for the elderly, for people with disabilities, and people not yet old enough or even you know, interested enough to want to drive for themselves. So we're designing the first generation of autonomous vehicles specifically to be used for ride hailing and ride sharing, which is another seismic shift in the transportation landscape. Now, the nature of ownership is changing. More and more people are relying on shared owners, uh, share ownership of uh, transformation, shared forms of, tra of, of transportation. And that means cars are going to be used much more efficiently. They're going to be decreasing uh, pollution, uh, saving people time, looking for parking spaces in cities, and helping to reduce traffic congestion all over the world making people life, maybe people's lives better for millions around the world. And that's why we introduced Ford Smart Mobility, to offer a wide range of transportation solutions. And Ford Smart Mobility is our plan to lead in autonomous vehicles, as well as vehicle connectivity, mobility, the customer experience, and data and analytics. Because we know there's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all transportation solution. Everybody is unique. So today, we're no longer just an auto company. We're also a mobility company. And that's always been the spirit of Ford. Since the very beginning of our company, empowering people to go where they couldn't go before strengthen our core business of making the world's favorite cars, trucks, SUVs, and electrified vehicles. So if you need a thrill ride, well, we have a great Focus RS, we have that terrific new Ford GT, and of course, we have our iconic Mustang. You need a truck with the most capability? The F-Series can get the job done for you. And you want to push new boundaries or create new ones? Well, our Explorer and our Escape are recognized as some of the world's best SUVs. And starting in 2021, well, if you want to get around the city without the hassle of driving or parking, Ford's new fully autonomous vehicle will be there for you in 2021. Autonomous vehicles will also be very good business for us. They'll allow us to gain a share of the growing transportation as a service market. We'll see new revenue for our core business because we'll be producing the autonomous uh, vehicles themselves and new revenue for our emerging businesses by using them in ride sharing and ride hailing services. Now, as we march towards fully autonomous vehicles in 2021, we're also making some other changes to help us get there. We're announcing today that we're expanding our presence right here in Silicon Valley from that single research and innovation center building right across the way there to the creation of an entire campus with the addition of these two buildings behind me. And it is incredibly, incredibly exciting because our plan is to double our staff by the end of next year. And we are so thrilled to be attracting some of the best engineers, technologists, researchers, and also designers to complement the already strong team that we have at Ford here, but also around the world. And they're coming to be part of a unique opportunity, and one that I think not many companies can offer. The opportunity to help change the world together. And so as we think about that, we're also announcing today that we're investing in several companies and partnership as we move towards autonomous vehicle production in 2021. First, we're investing in Velodyne, the world's LiDAR leader, to quickly mass produce the advanced and critically important sensors 
that help autonomous vehicles navigate on their own. We're also acquiring SIPES, a computer vision and machine learning startup that's based in Israel, and they'll play a key role in image and video processing, object detection, signal processing, and deep learning capabilities to help autonomous vehicles learn about their surroundings. We're also forming an exclusive licensing agreement with neuroscientist Dr. Sheila Nirenberg at Nirenberg Neuroscience. And this is incredible. She's actually developed a device for restoring sight to patients with degenerative eye diseases by cracking the neural code that the eye uses to transmit visual information to the brain. And now, Dr. Nirenberg is working with us to help bring more human-like intelligence to Ford's autonomous vehicles and helping them see the world around them. And we're investing in civil maps, helping us develop 3D high-resolution maps of our autonomous vehicle surroundings. So these four new partnerships build on the recent Ford investment in Pivotal, which is helping us accelerate the, the, the software to support autonomous vehicles. Plus, as you can imagine, we're working with a, a, a host of excellent universities like Stanford University, like MIT, University of Michigan, and also Aachen University in Germany. Now, Ford is no stranger to tech. If you look at our F-150 today alone, it has more than 130 million lines of code that, that reside in it. And also, if you think about it, most vehicles are made of between 4,000 and 6,000 parts. So if you think about it, we're the ultimate systems integrator. And we've been making it work seamlessly and, and in a satisfying way for consumers for decades. So for us, autonomous vehicles are the next, next natural step going forward. But of course, you know, putting a mass produced autonomous vehicle on the road in five years is not without a lot of innovation and a lot of hard work that's in front of us. But this is a transformational moment in our industry. And it is a transformational moment in our company. And perhaps the most transformational moment in the past century, or who knows, maybe even the next century. Yet, I know I speak for all of you here today and for the terrific 200,000 plus men and women around the Ford world, that we are not only embracing this challenge, we are absolutely energized by it, super energized by this. And we're continuing to do what Ford people have done for over a century. We're making people's lives better by changing the way the world moves, making transportation accessible to millions, using innovation, and advancing human progress. That's what's driven us the past 100 plus years. It's what drives us today, and what's, it's what's gonna drive us going forward into the future. So with that, I'd like to hand off to Raj Nair, our Chief Technical Officer, who's gonna tell you more about how we're bringing autonomous vehicles to life, and importantly, why what we're doing is so different from just about anything else that's out there. Thanks, Raj. Well, thanks, Mark. So as Mark said, you know, we take our commitment to autonomous vehicle technology very, very seriously. It really started back in the days of the 2005 DARPA challenge, where we were the only automaker that had a team at that challenge. And it's where we initially identified our technical foundation for autonomous driving. Today, we have more than 10 years of experience since then, designing, developing, and testing all of those elements. We've learned a lot. We've adjusted some of our plans due to the pace of technology advancement. But we've stayed true to our foundational technical approach. So at Ford, it's been important that we define what we mean by autonomous. Frankly, there's been a lot of discussion lately using terms some um, self-driving, driverless, autonomous. It's making it confusing for all of us, especially for our consumers. So let me tell you how we see it, how we talk about it because we see two distinct categories. The first is driver assist technologies, and the second is autonomous vehicle. 
fully autonomous vehicle technologies. So driver assist technologies is what's on the road today. We would define these as SAE levels one and two. And they're exactly as they say. They assist the driver. The driver has to remain in control and monitor the vehicle. And we're committed to the ongoing development and rollout of driver assist technologies. In fact, we're tripling our investment in driver assist technologies like traffic jam assist and fully automated parking within the next three years. But where we see the greatest opportunity is where we're able to remove the driver from responsibility of driving altogether. SAE levels four and five. The reason we're pursuing level four is twofold. First, it and only it holds the promise of extending mobility to millions of people, young and old, that aren't currently served by an affordable form, an accessible form of transportation. Second, it opens the door for us as Ford Motor Company for all new mobility services that could contribute to our core business and drive new avenues of revenue. Now, four years ago, to be honest, we thought about this like any other automaker, which was to take incremental steps in driver assist technologies to eventually achieve full autonomy. But today, we're looking at this differently. We learned that to achieve full autonomy, we'd have to take a completely different path. We abandoned the stepping stone approach of driver assist technologies and decided we were going to take the full leap to deliver a fully autonomous level four capable vehicle. And if you're considering level four capability in the context of the traditional automotive business, in the context of personal ownership, well, then you're really not seeing the full picture. We don't expect to see fully autonomous vehicles used for personal service for several years after their first introduction because the economics just simply don't make sense. But if you look at the opportunities that are presented when we remove the cost of the driver from mobility services such as ride hailing, on-demand shuttles, or package delivery, that's when it really gets exciting. This means that everyone will have access to a new and affordable mobility solution to use on a daily basis. And that's why it's our intention to have a fully autonomous level four capable vehicle with no driver controls commercially available in a ride hailing service starting in 2021. But I also wanna be clear about what our strategy is not. And it's not about level three automation that would still require a driver. And what we found through our research and development is the challenge with level three is that we don't yet know how to manage handover back to the driver and have him engage and have him situationally aware in being able to do that in a safe manner. It also doesn't provide the opportunity for these new mobility services because the driver is still required. So how are we gonna achieve level four? Well, we believe we're taking a unique approach in the industry. So let's talk about it. Based on the current and foreseeable technology, there are really two general pathways to deliver fully autonomous driving. The first is mediated perception, and the second is direct perception. So mediated perception uses the information from the vehicle sensors and then compares that to high definition maps to precisely locate the vehicle and understand what are the objects in the environment around it. Direct perception uses that same data from our sensors, but it directly understands the vehicle's positioning and directly interprets the objects in the environment around it. But it does require even more sophisticated software. We think we're unique in taking a hybrid approach using both mediated and direct perception in our vehicles. We're now significantly down the road in developing the hardware and software or the virtual driver platforms, and by the end of this year, we'll have tripled our development fleet of our level four autonomous vehicles, making it the largest fleet of any automaker. And next year, we're tripling it again. And one aspect that doesn't get much discussion is the vehicle platform itself. Much of the discussion is around the sensors and the software. What people forget is you have to take those elements and you have to integrate them into the vehicle with engineering that's just as unique. There's a significant amount of engineering on the vehicle side, such as redundant control systems, that needs to go into the development of the vehicle platform itself. 
So there's been this perception that automakers are, are just the hardware guys. We would make cars and plug in somebody else's software to make them autonomous. That's not the way it works, and that's not the case with Ford. We're developing our own virtual driver system with a team of engineers that includes roboticists, machine learning experts, and that team is growing. Plus, we have a dedicated team of data and analytics professionals supporting our program. And that team will double in size in the next year. And these are just the team members that are dedicated to the unique software and sensors. But we're leveraging our entire engineering workforce, be it the chassis engineers, the powertrain engineers, to manufacturing engineers, and all the expertise that they bring to bear for all of us to work together to develop the complete autonomous vehicle. So what exactly makes up this virtual driver system? Well, it is the sensors, the LIDAR, the cameras, and the radar. It's the algorithms for localization and path planning. It's computer vision and machine learning. It's highly detailed maps and all the computational and electronics horsepower to make it all work. And today's announcement further underscores our intention to design and develop an advanced autonomous vehicle platform that's robust and dependable and provides safety for our customers. So let me give you an additional perspective on the role that each of these new partners will play. So from the start of our program 10 years ago, we recognized that LiDAR was going to be a critical element. We were a pioneer in the use of the technology for autonomous vehicles. So our investment in Velodyne will help us move quickly towards mass production of a more affordable automotive grade LiDAR sensor. And Velodyne is the unparalleled leader in the technology and, and knowledge in this autonomous vehicle sphere. We've used their LiDARs exclusively on our development vehicles. And they're the only supplier in the market that can help us achieve our goals of delivering a high volume autonomous vehicle. Second, our acquisition of SIPES. It enhances our computer vision capabilities and machine learning capabilities. We identified Skype through our technology scouting efforts in Israel that started in 2013. What we found in Skype impressed us, and their capabilities are going to help us deliver solutions around object identification, around advanced visualization systems, and even self-diagnostics and automatic calibration of our sensors to help us improve performance and accuracy. Third. Let's talk about our strategic alliance with Nirenberg Neuroscience. What Sheila Nirenberg and her team are doing just holds incredible promise for society, much less autonomous vehicles. So we're working with her to apply their retinal encoder technology to our virtual driver system. And this device, which is really being used to restore sight to patients with retina disease, if that technology can restore sight, imagine what it can do in an autonomous vehicle. Combined with the machine learning algorithms, Dr. Nirenberg's technology could ultimately help us scale up the autonomous vehicle to operate in areas where the 3D maps may not be available. And finally, civil maps. 3D maps that help provide a foundation of knowledge about the roads that are autonomous vehicle reference to make decisions. They've developed an innovative process to apply artificial intelligence to create these, this meaningful map information. And that facilitates the ability to crowdsource that data to update and share road data and real time transmit it across a network of our autonomous vehicles. And that investment is a direct result of our participation in the ecosystem here in Palo Alto. So as Mark said, there is a lot of innovation and hard work ahead of us as we work to put a mass produced autonomous vehicle on the road in five years. It's going to take the collective effort of our Ford team, our partners and government and regulators around the world. But we see the opportunity, how autonomous vehicles can help address safety, help address societal and environmental challenges. And we also see the business opportunity, how autonomous vehicles will allow us to be a part of the growing transportation as a service market. It, it's an exciting time. And we're looking forward to making people's lives better and make transportation accessible for millions around the world. I want to thank all of our employees here and around the world for their commitment to deliver on this exciting future. And I want to thank you to all of our partners here and the media for joining us today. We're so excited about this future, and thank you for allowing us to share it with you today. Thank you. <laughs>